What is going on everybody? Thank you all so much for joining me. You're watching Spartan G Gaming and this is World War 2. In today's video guys, we're going to be looking at the new Resistance DLC Pack 1 that is now available live for the Xbox One. Now I've already been playing on these maps guys the last few weeks um, on the PS4 and they're absolutely amazing. But for those of you who have got Xbox One and you have been waiting for this moment, March the 1st, to download this new Resistance Pack, now you can. It is live guys if you've got Season Pass. For those of you who haven't got Season Pass, Try not to worry too much guys, I'm going to try and help you as much as I possibly can to show you around the new multiplayer maps and what they're all about, give you a bit of information, that kind of thing. And then you can make a decision for yourself if you normally do this separately in downloading guys into whether it's worth downloading. Now the download itself is going to cost you 4.6 gigabytes of memory, so it's quite a big download. If you've got fiber optic broadband, it's going to take you about 20 minutes to 30 minutes. If you haven't got fiber optic, it could potentially you know, download in about an hour, maybe more. When you do, if you do decide to download this, you'll get Resistance Mosh Pit Core Mode, Resistance Mosh Pit Hardcore. It's up to you what you prefer to play, guys. And you've got preferred game modes in there, such as Team Deathmatch, Hardpoint, Domination. We've also got the new Operation Intercept War Game Mode. And that's 24-7 at the moment. Now, I haven't never played the War Games yet, so this will be a first for me. But I'm going to show you around that and uh, see what it's all about later on. Okay, so we're now going to go into one of the first of the three new multiplayer maps. We're going to have a little look around it, have a little gameplay in it, and show you what it's all about. Now, for those of you who don't know, but Occupation is a revamped map of the classic game map that I used to love from Modern Warfare 3, which coincidentally was called Resistance. So if you remember back to Modern Warfare 3, guys, I used to love that. And if you remember the map resistance, this is a revamped map of that. Now, when I could play resistance in Modern Warfare 3, I would always take the opportunity to play it. Me and my mates used to play this 24-7 whenever we could. I used to love this. This was the best ever map in Modern Warfare 3. So now that they've brought it out as occupation on World War 2, you know, looking at the map straight away, looking at the layout, kind of feeling my way around, it, near enough, the layout feels exactly the same way as it did on Resistance on Modern Warfare 3. So that made me feel comfortable. I, I knew exactly where the layout was. I knew exactly where the enemy was spawning from, so that helped me out. The only thing different is obviously the location and the scenery that goes on of some of these buildings. Now, I'm going to try and look around wherever I can, guys, just to give you that kind of feel of, of what this is all about. But this map, obviously, we are in Paris. You saw the Eiffel Tower at the start. You can see in the background over there now. And this is German Occupied. It is a mid-range combat map zone where, you know, you're going to come into close confrontation with enemy, which is always good. So maybe an assault rifle SMG or maybe a shotgun would be good for some of these little locations on this map. But it's also good for sniper rifling as well. You've got some long distance locations on here. So it's a great overall map for whatever weapon you're trying to get camos up for or just trying to use your preferred weapons, guys. It really makes the most out of your weapons. There's also plenty of buildings around as well for defensive positions. And to be honest, I mean, it's up to you, the gameplay you play. But like I said, there are plenty of buildings around that are open. So you can defensively play if you want to. You can hide away in those buildings, look out of the little windows. The map has got plenty of those little locations for you to do that. We've also got tight corners here as well. And like I said, plenty of opportunity to have close quarters or long range. It is absolutely fantastic. But thinking back to Modern Warfare 3, when I used to adore this map, and playing it now in World War 2, there's not much changed apart from the scenery. The actual gameplay itself, when you're playing this map, is near enough the same. You've got all the action in the world you could ever possibly want, guys. Um, you do feel, as I said before, very comfortable, you know, treaching around some of the locations and some of the areas on this actual map. This, this up the stairs here, this of these steps used to be great i used to love coming up there you used to get like four or five enemy in front of you and you used to get your quad feeds you used to get your frenzy kills all up there and again no doubt that's going to happen in future gameplay on call of duty on this new occupation map even inside this building it feels very very eerie because it's just bringing so many memories back to me when i used to play on modern warfare 3 and and again this for me now is going to get a massive thumbs up just because they've decided to bring this resistance map out from Modern Warfare 3, where I used to love. Please don't forget as well, guys, when you are looking around for this, go on, obviously looking around for them for you today. 
so you can have a good look at them. But there's so much going on on the outside of the maps as well. There's a tank now crawling past there. But sometimes, because you know we get so involved in battle, we overlook some of the little things that some of these game producers have put into the game, and it's a shame. Obviously, someone has you know paid great attention to have that tank rolling past at that time. And they, they didn't need to, but they put it in for our luxury. And I think it just, you know, it needs to have great respect for little things like that around the maps. But there are plenty of things happening and moving around the maps. You just got to notice them, guys. Don't overlook them. Have a look around when you do get a moment, when you're not in close quarter battle with an enemy. And they, they, like I say, there's so much going on, which I really, really love. And... The great thing of all is as well, if you've got an Xbox One X like me, I mean, you don't have to have Xbox One X, but if you have, you'll notice the difference in graphics. They are 4K and it is absolutely superb. So fat thumbs up for occupation. We're now moving on to Valkyrie. So this is the second new multiplayer map. Valkyrie again feels very similar to another map that I used to play in Advanced Warfare. It seems like a carbon cut out copy now the map that i'm thinking of guys i'm not sure if i haven't read up about this but the map that i'm thinking about so i used to love advanced warfare and this was the map that i'm thinking of it was in advanced warfare and i'm thinking detroit so think back to advanced warfare playing detroit guys even go back to the game and, and have a look yourself if you want to but i'm sure this is like the carbon copy of that map there's something very eerily similar about it but whether it is or not, whether they've done it on purpose or not, I don't know. There's nothing confirmed about that. But it feels very, very similar. But again, this is a map, Valkyrie, where you can use your shotgun very easily in this. There's close quarters opportunities going on here. You've got um, moments as well in the map where you'll be a little bit more open and you can use your sniper rifles to good use. So you've got long range, short range, and again, there's plenty of buildings. I mean, you can see me as I'm just walking around the map here, just on the outskirts. How many buildings I'm going into? They are everywhere. Now, around every corner, there could be an enemy. We don't know, but that's the excitement about these kind of maps that they're bringing out now. I love it. It's brilliant. We're actually playing Domination on this um, Valkyrie map today. And Domination is a pretty good game mode to go into to use this map. I'm not saying other game modes wouldn't be good as well. They probably would, but I haven't tried them out yet. But we're just playing Domination here just for the sake of me doing this video today. But... I'm actually really liking this map. Again, this is another map that's going to get the thumbs up for me. Especially when playing Domination, as, as I said, there's a centre area of the map here where they put point B and everyone just floods in the middle. And it's great action-packed gameplay, guys. It really is. So that's another thumbs up from me. The third and final new multiplayer map is Anthropoid. Now, I'm not sure this is a remake as I have another map. I, I, I haven't got no senses or feelings of any other map that I've played so far previous in any other Call of Duty game. But to be honest, guys, Anthropoid is probably one of the best looking maps, okay, in regards to the scenery that they've got around. Again, they've gone to town with great detail in everything they've done. There's plenty to look at when you do get the opportunity to look around, guys. There's lots to look at. The graphics, again, are immensely superb. And every little bit of the map has great detail in it it is absolutely phenomenally good guys it really is it's just a shame we can't go over that bridge there i'd have liked to have done that now again the actual map itself you can have close quarters moments so you've got again the opportunity to use an smg assault rifle very easily or even a shotgun but you've also got great locations as well where you can again easily use a sniper rifle so again whatever weapon you prefer this map will suit whatever weapon you prefer to have now, we're coming into this map playing Hardpoint. So it's going to get a little bit messy, obviously. I'm not sure of the Hardpoint locations yet. I haven't played it enough. This is probably only my maybe first or second game of actually playing this map. So I'm not really sure where the locations are. But we're going to try and go around more, look at the map itself. And rather than just kind of playing the game, we'll play the game when we can. But this is a great location, guys. If you come down here, there's a massive river that flows down by the side of it. Now, I thought that was the edge of the map, and you couldn't go in there. But you actually can go in that water. You're going in the river. We're actually going to do that very shortly. And I'll show you that you can go in there without dying. And you can actually even go further beyond the river and actually have a big battle with enemy across the river. 
So from one side to the other, like here, guys, you can actually shoot enemy from the other side. So I think, you know, that gives a perspective of how big this actual anthropoid map is. And, and again, when we've got game modes like this and maps like this, how big they are, it makes for exciting gameplay. It's, again, it's action-packed. Let's have a little look down in the river itself, guys. Now, this isn't probably the best of water that I could potentially go into. It is a bit murky, very hard to see, but you can actually swim in it. Probably not doing my character any good. Probably going to get a disease from it. <laughs> but um, it is actually fantastic we can do this. You can't shoot or anything under the water. You can't do anything. You can't stab or anything like that either. I know in, in uh, Call of Duty Advanced Warfare you could do that in one of the game maps. But in this one you can't. But the great thing is, again, great detail has gone into this. Someone has actually gone into detail and thought about putting some fish under the water, which is actually fantastic. So again, don't look, overlook it, guys. Respect you know, all that it's got in the game. Have a look around when you can, because, I mean, I've, I've only just touched the surface, a little thing's gone on. There's some fish on the side. They're jumping up and down, look. You know, don't miss little things like that. There's probably more, but again, as I said, I've only touched the surface of little things that are going on. But again, a big thumbs up for that map, Anthropoid. Now, for the first time ever, I'm going to have my first play in a war mode. And this is the Intercept. This is actually 24-7 at the moment. Now, the loading screen at the start is obviously now highlighting the missions that we've got to do in the game, which I think is pretty cool. So this is completely different to just multiplayer gameplay. We've actually got some missions to do within the game. So I quite like this. I don't know why I haven't played this before, but obviously now I'm going to get the opportunity to play this now that Intercept is available in the new DLC pack 1. One thing I liked about it was it had cutscenes in it as well. So you've got a little cutscene here before the game starts. And one of the missions was that we had to do at the start, which I was very intrigued in doing, was rescuing the resistance. So I thought that was pretty cool. Again, if you look at the map, guys, it's a completely different map to any multiplayer map that we have so far. So again, that's good, that's fresh, that's new. Any new maps we get are all great. So I quite like that. As you can see in front of us here, we have locations to go to. We've got to do something there. We're not really sure what we have to do at the moment. But then I find out that we do have to break in and force our way into this building where they are holding captive the resistance. I'm not sure how many resistance people are in there, but we've got to rescue them. Now, this is where we've got to try and break into. There are several of these locations around, guys. You have to set your explosives. And again, this adds appeal to the game. I was really starting to get addicted to this because it was just fresh and new from just normal multiplayer games so again you know if you're like me and never played war before give it a go guys it is really good and it just adds a whole new element to the gameplay of world war ii completely it's, it's absolutely brilliant i love it so here we are we are rescuing very quickly some of the resistance there's only two in there but again that is fun guys that is great we can also build walls as well to defend you know, the, res the resistance that were held captive on the other end of this. So we're now reversed and all that. So just giving you some highlights of the actual gameplay that you do here, guys. One of the final missions is trying to stop the enemy tank with a massive plow on the front of it, trying to get into one of our locations where we've got to try and prevent it from going. Again, it gets messy, guys. There's plenty of action. It's fantastic. I love this. It was intense. And there's lovely cutscenes in it like that. But that is great. Intercept gets again the thumbs up from me. I'm going to play that more often. So now to top this off, guys, the final, um, obviously, map that we have and the game mode we have in the new Resistance DLC Pack 1 is the Zombies game um, on Dark Shores. Now, the Darker Shores, I've never really played Zombies, to be honest, too much, guys. But when I first came into this for the first ever time, we had a foggy map, there was mist going on, it was very airy, which added again appeal to me actually playing this game. And I think we were kind of already started the game, I think I came into it wave 2, wave 3, something like that. So this is obviously one of the waves that you get to where you can't see anything in front of you, but you still get the chance to, you know, cut up through zombies, which I thought was fun. But again, if you're into this kind of thing, guys, and you love zombies... You're going to love this new map. Now, don't worry, because as you progress through the waves, as you know, the mode will change, the scenery will change as well. You can expand your, you know, your, your destinations where you're going by unlocking gates and, you know, that kind of thing. But you will get the opportunity to, you know, get up to the next wave and then the mist will disappear. So you can actually see where you're going. But I actually like the zombies. Again, it's a thumbs up from me. And I'll see if I can play that a little bit more often because it did actually entice me to want to play this more. 
So I'm gonna try and get into this because there is a story behind it and I wanna try and make that story work. So again, yeah, I really did enjoy Zombies. So this is just a little highlight into some of the little gameplay you can have in Zombies, guys, if you're interested in that. But I'm going to leave it there, guys. That is all what I'm going to show you today. Hopefully, I can help you make the decision whether you're going to download this new pack or not, guys. But thanks for watching, guys. Really appreciate it. And take care. See you on the next video.